Well, what is up everyone? My name is Unbroke Are You, you can call me Broke. And uh guess what? I'm restarting the uh tutorial series again. And uh, many of you are wondering why I deleted the uh previous couple tutorials. The main reason is because of copyright infringement. I don't want to get sued because I was using uh assets that w that did not belong to me. So in this new series, I'm going to be using the scar I released along with the CSS Redux hands. Those are um, legal assets, so um, yeah, hope that goes well. And also, this tutorial, this series, um, will be more suited for complete beginners uh, who are just new to 3ds Max and new to animating. But of course, I'm expecting you to know at least a bit about how the computer works, about the mouse, about navigation, about the keyboard, right? I'm gonna ignore all that stuff. So. Yeah, this first tutorial here is going to be really simple. It's going to be about the main graphic user interface of 3ds Max, how you're going to use it to animate, and of course, just some of the um, viewport setup that's going to help you animate more efficiently. And of course, I'm, I'm recording with Fraps. Um, I hope you don't mind that counter up there. It's a bit, I know, it's a bit annoying, but um, it'll have to do. So let's get started with uh, explaining some of the uh, main graphic user interface. So here we have the four viewports here when you just start up 3ds Max, and they're pretty much how you vi how you visualize the 3D scene. This one here is set as perspective. It's pretty much how your eyes would see the scene as. And um, yeah, it's, this is the you're going to be using this viewport um, for majority of your animations, along with a camera viewport, which I do not have right now. But uh, when you're animating, you're hardly ever going to be using these three viewports. I'm going to explain. Uh, I'm going to explain that later. Right now, let's go talk about the uh, top toolbar and the sidebar here. The toolbar contains a uh, majority of the uh, universal tools you're going to need for pretty much anything you're going to do in this 3ds Max. You have the parenting tools. They call it link, but I like called parenting. Oh, and just to uh, make sure, um, I'm not professional in 3ds Max, so my terminology is going to be a bit off. Um, but in the end, I hope you guys can just learn something about animation and not about terminology. You can all Google that up. It's really easy. And um, this is parenting tools. This, these are the select tools, and you can select by name, which gives you a list of all the objects in your scene, and that helps you uh, just select things easier. And then you have the move, rotate, and scale tools up here. You can access them by using the keyboard as well by pressing W for move, E for rotate, and R for scale. Now during animation, you hardly ever use scale. If not, just never touch that thing at all because it's going to destroy your animation when you're trying to export it into other games. It's really buggy. Just don't touch it. And of course, we have the also important uh, track bar here. A track bar is pretty much uh, where your animations are going to go, all your keyframes. And I'm going to talk about that some other time. Um, this tutorial, this one here is going to be about the uh, simple stuff. I'm not going to talk about the keyframes. Of course, you have the sidebar which is uh, all the uh, object-specific controls. So if I was to make a sphere in the scene, it would give me the modify options for it, along with the hierarchy, motion, whatever stuff. I'm not going to talk about that. It's a bit too long for this tutorial. Maybe some other time. So that, that is it for pretty much the main user interface. It is a bit much for a beginner to look at, but eventually you get used to it. So now let's take about the uh, viewport setup and viewport controls. So um, as you can see in the beginning of the tutorial, I was dragging around the viewport, rotating around it, you know, and uh, zooming in and out. These controls can be easily accessed uh, using a three-button mouse along with your keyboard. So uh, to zoom in, you can zoom in and out. You can use uh, the uh, scroll scroll bar, scroll wheel on your mouse by just scrolling in and out. You can hold Alt, which will allow you to scroll in, uh, zoom in a bit uh, less at a smaller interval, or you can hold control, which will zoom in and out at a bigger interval. So again, that's out, and that's with control. And of course, that's just uh, the uh, zoom in and out. To pan through the scene, you hold down middle mouse button and drag. And that moves around the scene. And to, do ro to rotate around the scene, you hold out, and then you click the middle mouse button and drag. And then you'll be orbiting, orbiting around the scene. That's pretty much some simple viewport controls that helps you navigate through the scene. Another useful one, which is to uh, zoom into selection. 
you have the object selected and just press Z and it will automatically zoom in on the object for you. So let's say maybe you have an object here and you're completely lost in the scene and you're like, oh my god, where is it? Just press Z and you're good. Let's delete that for now. And of course, as I talked about before, these viewports are hardly ever used when you're animating. And of course, I want to also see a curve editor along with this track view. I can open up the mini curve editor, but then I cannot see my track view. And I want to see both of them at the same time. So a solution to that would be to customize these viewports here to allow me to put a track bar at the bottom along with a curve editor as long as my camera viewport and my perspective viewport. So I'll go ahead and close this mini curve editor and let's customize these viewports. I'm going to right click this plus sign, going to configure viewports and I'm going to select layout tab and select this uh, this fort layout here with the long one at the bottom and the two small ones at the top. Press OK. In this one, I'm going to set this viewport here as a curve editor. I can do that by right clicking left. Select this viewport here first, right clicking left. Going to extended viewports, going to track view and making a new track view. And now, as you can see, this brings up me up a new curve editor here. I'm just going to bring that down a bit so I can see more of these two windows. As you can see, I have um, the track view along with the curve editor in place, and this is really useful when you're animating. I will be talking about the uh, both of these things in a later tutorial. So now these two reports here, I'm going to set this one as perspective, which is going to be used for navigating the scene, and we'll set this one as a camera, which I'm not going to create now. I'm going to explain the cameras uh, on a later date. So I'm going to set this one as camera by pressing C, but I don't have a camera in scene, so that's not going to work. So this is pretty much the uh, setup you're going to have for your for, for animating. And um, of course, this is the graphic modeling toolbar here. You're not going to be needing that. So um, we can go ahead and delete that by clicking this one here. And you can show it again by clicking it again. This just gives you more space for animating, which is always useful. So this pretty much concludes the uh, basic uh, introduction to 3ds Max. I'm going to be making a pretty, pretty big series, uh, which is going to explain uh, rigging, uh, controller setup, animation, all that fancy stuff. And um, yeah, I hope you guys will learn something from this. And um, this concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys have a great day.